This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen is out. So today I am your KTAR car guy. Bumper to Bumper Radio is heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. And at Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car repair experience. So if you've got car questions, I've got car answers. It's actually not just I, but we, because I've got John Riggle, the lead technician at Tri-City Transmission and Auto Repair, where I work. And he's going to help me help you with your car. So to give it, get a hold of the show, 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. And today on the roadmap, we've got some fact or fiction, open phones and texts. And John, I've been doing this show for six years, and the most frequently asked question is about transmission service. Sure. And it's it's the most frequently asked uh, phone call that we get at the shop. Should I service my transmission? How much does it cost? When should I do it? Have I waited too long? What should I do? And uh, it is... I think as a consumer, it would be super, super confusing. Yeah. Because yeah. there's just a plethora of bad information out there. Yes, there is. About servicing your transmission. And the other reason this topic came up is we had a, we had a vehicle in our shop, and uh, the, the lady drives a Korean import. I don't want to be specific because I don't want her to know we're talking about her car. Right. And uh, she went to a <clears throat> she went to a, a loop shop and mm-hmm. they they service a transmission for her, and she left there. She this car's only got sixty seventy thousand miles yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. Goes in with a working transmission. They recommend a service. She leaves with a transmission problem. Yep. And uh, and a lot of people say well, I don't want to service my transmission because I won't cause issues. Exactly. Well, this one caused an issue. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll discuss why here in a minute. So she leaves there, and she then goes to the dealership with her transmission problem, and she says, I got a transmission problem. And they, I think they service the transmission again, mm-hmm. maybe to, to make sure the last shop did it right. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Uh, all, the, all the details of it, but they said you need a brand-new transmission. Mm-hmm. So the lady says, hmm, it still doesn't sit right with her. She comes and sees us, and we go to, di- you know, we go to diagnose, and it, it's just not adding up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so we decide... Let's just take the transmission pan off and see what's going on here. Yeah. And what we found was there's a drain plug on the transmission pan, and it got ran all the way up. Too long of a wrong drain plug. Some, somebody, had, somebody had pulled the drain plug out, drained the fluid out of it, lost the original drain plug that they took out, went over and grabbed a uh, an engine oil drain plug with the right threads that screwed it in the hole. Unfortunately, that drain plug was a good half inch longer than the original drain plug. (laughs) So it went up and it cut the speed sensor wires and shorted the speed sensor wires against the valve body and caused the transmission to not shift. It went into a limp-in mode. And um, so, so, yeah. Both places, the place that A did the service originally, they said, uh, you know, Unfortunately, you're going to need a transmission. Yeah. And then for the second opinion, they went to the dealer because they're the almighty and they know everything. And the dealer said, oh, you need a transmission. And then they really came and saw the almighty. Okay, no, I can't say that. (laughs) But but we checked it out, and and, and it just didn't add up. This car's only got 65,000 miles on it. I I don't believe it is a transmission. Shouldn't have been broken. Shouldn't have been broken. Yeah. So that brings me to my next point. All right. A bad transmission service is worse than no transmission service at all. Yes, so absolutely. Th- that's that's the, the thing I could thoroughly say. That's the bottom line. And I think that there's so much gray area. I was just, uh, before the show, I was online, and I just typed in, you know, is, is, it a, is it good or bad to service my transmission? And I just got all kinds of information. And I'm thinking you out there as a consumer, boy, you are really, really, really turned around because some people say yay, some people say no, some people say maybe. Yep. And, and uh and so I, I would be completely turned around. And I think that, I think because everyone's confused, and a lot of people are given advice about transmissions that have never seen the inside of a transmission. Would yeah. you say that be oh, true? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Absolutely. So they don't, they don't really know. It's this black box within our industry. Yeah. And because it's the black box, but also there's a part of our industry that's heavy into marketing mm-hmm. and making money and making profit. So this is a good service that we can sell people. 
I was at a car wash the other day, and they, they have a lube department, and there's this this big screen TV on the on the wall, and it shows an animated video of the transmission, mm-hmm. and it shows some nasty oil in it. Then it shows this clean, cool, refreshing transmission fluid and why you should be getting a transmission service there. And I worked at a car wash when I was in high school, and we serviced transmissions. Yep. But knowing what I know now, <laughs> <laughs> we weren't helping anybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, so, I mean, and a lot of people are well-intentioned, so I don't want to pick on people. But this is one of those things where a lot of people don't know what they don't know. Well, yeah, this is, this is a subject, you know, with transmissions anymore. Uh, how many of them don't have dipsticks? Oh, I, yeah. Some of these, you know, I, I cringe half 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 my day. I've got to go look up what temperature I'm supposed to be checking the fluid at, what method I'm supposed to be checking the level at. So it's really easy to botch something <laughs> as simple as correctly filling a transmission anymore. You know, don't have dipsticks in half of them. Yeah, and that's and that's the confusion. And in what what John's referring to is transmissions. They got rid of the dipstick, and I I think the manufacturer a saved ten bucks on a dipstick tube and a dipstick. But B, they don't want the average consumer tinkering with their transmission. Chrysler, Chrysler still have the dipstick tube, but no dipstick because they don't want people who aren't uh, qualified. qualified to service the transmission. It's funny because we get a we get a vehicle in our shop that we haven't necessarily worked on the transmission. We know what transmission it is. We've rebuilt them before, but this is a new vehicle to us, and it's got a longer dipstick tube. So then we got to go down and buy a ninety dollar dipstick, the yeah. actual indicator, so mm-hmm. that we can service this person's car. Yeah. But transmission fluid is a moving target, so it expands and contracts with temperature. And so in the modern vehicle, there is no dipstick tube, so you got to check it up through a standpipe in the pan underneath the vehicle, mm-hmm. and there's tools to do that, but you you got to read the scanner so you can see exactly what the transmission yeah, temperature is. You have to know what the temperature is, and some some of them you have to be careful. Some of them will only read the proper temperature when they're in gear, not in park, but you have to check the fluid in park. Uh, some of them you have to check the fluid in, in neutral, which is a real common miss that we see. Uh, yes. They're uh, underfilled because the guys checked them in park. The fluid level's higher. It looks like it's full, but you really check that transmission in neutral. So they're all done. They think they've done good, but the trans is two quarts low on fluid. You know. <laughs> That's a common one. And I, and I call people on a Chrysler. I say, hey, you know, we got we got your car figured out. It was two quarts low on fluid. Yeah. It wasn't low on fluid. I just checked it this morning. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> but you must have, you, you didn't check it in neutral, and that makes a two quart difference. Yeah. And, and, and John, people don't, probably don't realize this. As a transmission shop, we have other auto shops call us and say, hey, how, do, how the heck do I check the fluid on this? Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, say, yeah. hey, welcome to my world, man. Yeah. You know, you got to get in there and you got to figure it out and it's yeah. exactly there's what a procedure doing. for doing everything it's all published it's all it's all out there you have to know where to look and you have to follow the procedure if you don't you can be very wrong well so this is a and this is you know i was looking on online about the transmission service thing and you know one of the things is is that transmissions at some point do fail and, and sometimes people are buying a transmission from me, and, and, and they say, well, how could it fail? You know, it worked great last week, and yeah. why would I need a transmission, and do I do something wrong? No, you didn't do anything wrong. It's like your brakes wore out. Yeah. you got to replace the brakes. Your transmission at some point wears out, mm-hmm. and you're going to need a transmission. So I think the idea of servicing a transmission is to prolong the life of the transmission and, mm-hmm. and keep it working better. And one of those phrases I use is that transmission fluid cleans, cools, and protects your transmission. And I can make it sound really nice, yeah. but at some point it does break down. Mm-hmm. But I think that, in, in John, uh, one of the things that comes up is fluids. Mm-hmm. We stock 32 flavors of fluid. Yeah. And it actually may be 45 now, but everyone knows 32 uh, yeah. flavors, so I still use that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch. It's a lot of fluid. Yeah, we and got a literally, lot of we got a. Fluids. We got a spreadsheet, and it's it's a pain in the neck to keep all this going, and so there'll be a sales guy that will walk into my shop tomorrow, and he'll say, uh, he'll say, hey, Dave, why why are you stocking all those fluids? I got this fluid over here that will take care of seventy percent of those, and the other thirty percent I got this fluid over here. Right. And uh, you know, and, and I say, oh, okay, great, Mr. Salesman, how much boron is in it? Because I don't know. Exactly. How much zinc is in it? <laughs> I don't know. What's the viscosity? I don't know. Well, how do you know it takes care of all those fluids? Right. You know, it's like, uh, you know, Carrie and you and I, we go out and we want to get a hamburger, and he wants a hamburger with no cheese, but he wants pickles, he wants ketchup. You want a hamburger with no ketchup, no pickles, but you want some cheese. And I just want a straight, you know, I watch my carbs, so I just want it wrapped in lettuce. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Now, what burger are you going to give us that satisfies all of us? Exactly. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. So how do they? How is it that I can have one fluid take care of all these things? In uh, so yeah, it's there's there's more to it, and I would say, and I could probably confidently say, and this is not. I can't look this up online. This is just my experience that over half of the shops don't use the right fluid in the transmission. They use a fluid that someone's told them is the right fluid. Right. So it's not an intentional thing. I mean, someone came in and said, yeah, this yeah, will yeah. take care of all that. Oh, yeah. They market, it. They, they market universal fluids, but some of the specifications for the fluids are mutually exclusive. You cannot have one universal transmission fluid. It's just not It's it's not possible. So they, they, they think they're doing right by you, but uh, they, they've been sold a bill of goods, mm -hmm. and therefore they're using a bill of goods on your car. Yeah. And that's one thing that really starts to, you know, we have transmissions that come in. they got some sort of weird chatter or fluffy shift or slip bang whatever you want to call it yeah and you ch you put the right fluid back in it and everything works great so this is what I, I think you should service your transmission we'll talk about intervals coming up here in the next segment uh that's definitely important uh for transmissions and one other thing that people forget john how many transmissions have we fixed because it, the car had a bad battery oh yeah oh yeah we get those too <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's one of the things I tell people that a lot of transmissions get replaced in air, and they don't necessarily believe me. But when you see the stuff that comes through our bay, and it turns out to be a battery that keeps this thing from working. So the first thing John does on any car he checks out, well, the first thing he does is walks around and looks for dents, because he might be yeah, playing for dents. Yeah. But then he puts a battery tester on it. Every car. And, and if it's got a bad battery, we're selling an interstate battery. We believe in interstate batteries. We yep. put that thing in there, and then we know we're starting with a good electrical system. That transmission is highly electronic. The modern ones are, so you don't want to skip that We've out. We've had Hondas in there with bad batteries that did not move. The transmission would not go into gear, drive, or reverse. Car shows up on a tow truck. These people are calling, oh, come on, give me the worst case. How much is it going to be? Just just 78 bucks. Let's check it out. Let's see what's going on first. Yep. And, and they always go to the worst. You know, yep. Start thinking best right off the bat. Yep. And, and and so we go ahead and check it out. It's got a bad bad battery. So and batteries so, can fool you because the cars will start and run with the permanent magnet gear reduction starters. It doesn't take any current to start the car, but they'll start and run. But you don't have enough to keep the modules up and running. And you can have a car issues. that starts and runs, and the transmission doesn't work, and it's got a bad battery. For sure. So when we come back, we're taking your questions and comments. It uh, could be about transmissions or anything related to your car. 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Looking for that last perfect getaway for summer? Look no further than Bunker to Bunker, the golf show's next tour stop at the spectacular JW Marriott Desert Ridge Resort and Spa on Saturday, August 26th, benefiting Phoenix Children's Hospital. An incredible value. The two-person scramble on the famous Faldo course is loaded with special prizes, lunch, and a coupon for another round of golf, all for just $85. Make it a stay and play weekend with room specials starting as low as $89 per night. Space is limited, so register today at BunkerGolf.com. I'd sing that song, but you do not want to hear that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen is out, so I've got John Riggle from Tri-City Transmission. He's helping me help you with your car. So if you've got car questions, I encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text us at 411923 uh, and then uh, I'm trying to think what else here, John. Uh, transmission day. So if you got a transmission question or you want to talk about transmission service, frequently asked question on this show, we can talk about that. But if you want to talk about your gonculator valve or your twin chrome commuter valves or your dual overhead mouse traps, we're more than happy to talk about that also. So anyhow, let's get to we're going to go with uh, Jim in Phoenix. He's got a 2013 Ford Taurus. How can we help you, Jim? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. I really appreciate the show. 
And okay. anyhow, I, the Taurus it has a uh, signal coming up with a beep on the dash for low oil pressure when the vehicle comes to a stop. It doesn't stay on, but it, it indicates low oil pressure and then goes off. Now, this is only after the car is warm. Like, first thing when you start it up and roll in it, it's, it doesn't do it. But after it's warmed up, it starts to do it. Has anyone checked the oil level on that thing? I did, and it's, it's at correct level. How many, um, how many miles are in the car? Uh, about 100,000. Okay. Does the car seem to run okay? Yeah, no other issues, no noises, nothing like that. No, um, no I, other warning lights? No, okay. no. And like I said, the check engine light is not coming on, and it's just a warning of low oil pressure when you come to a, the vehicle comes to a stop. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's a process for figuring that out. The very first thing you're going to do is just find somebody that uh, is competent to uh, uh, perform a mechanical engine oil pressure test. We're going to take a mechanical gauge. We're going to take and tee in where the uh, sending unit for the oil pressure is and physically measure the oil pressure with a mechanical gauge and see see what the oil pressure is. There can be a lot of different reasons for, for low oil pressure and idle, um, generally engine wear, but we want to rule out simple things like a bad sending unit. A, a bad sending unit alone could cause that kind of fault. So uh, no real pattern failures on that one that I know of. So it's it's uh, you get to start off with uh, and, diagnosing it. And that's not uncommon that you have a Bad sending unit. That's the the, yep. the the deal that measures that pressure at the engine. So we're gonna we're gonna verify that you got no noises. Generally, you'll get if you do have a low oil pressure, maybe a low end knock. Yeah, usually yeah. you got a rattle or a knock or something like that. And if you don't have that, that's that's usually a good sign. Um, but uh, uh, need to perform mechanical engine oil pressure test. And then when the car's hot versus cold, I mean, cold first thing in the morning, your oil pressure is gonna be way high because that oil's thick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and then as it heats up, it's going to change a little bit. So if it's if it's reading low, it's going to read ultra low once it's heated up. Sure. So, thanks for the call, Jim. Six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. We are going to go with Steve in Surprise. He's got a two thousand seven Ford E three fifty. How can we help you, Steve? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, I've got a um, intermittent water leak. We, we bought a used about one hundred thirty thousand miles, and just occasionally have some water underneath it. Not the AC, definitely you know block water, um, but only a couple tablespoons at a time. So my suspicion was a water pump seal at the bearing that was sporadic leaking, but never could pin it down. And just occasionally add some water to it, didn't have time to get to the shop. And I recently, when filling the water, decided it was not a good idea to put the water cap back on. Apparently, you just threw it away. Um, I no noticed the next time I checked it that the cap wasn't on top of the water reservoir. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't had I haven't had a leak since I lost it. Ah. That puzzles me. And it's been about two months now, and not a drop of water is leaving um, since I lost the cap. So I'm a little perplexed. Yeah, you made it uh, just without the cap being on. You're probably not building quite as much pressure in the cooling system as you normally would. So it 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 may uh, it, it may slow the leak down. Uh, so what leaks intermittently? I mean, what 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 sporadically changes? All kinds of stuff. <laughs> we see it all. We see it all the time. Uh, on that particular one, uh, I'm going to assume that one's got a five four in it. If it's got mm -hmm. a five point four, there's a tube underneath the intake manifold that goes from the water pump, uh, runs from the backside of the water pump through the valley on the engine up into the, uh, and then feeds the uh, heater tubes to circulate water through the heater. And it's also used as a bypass. There's an O-ring on that tube that will leak. It is hard to see. If you don't know where it's at, it's really hard to see. But what happens is the, it leaks. They'll leak cold sometimes, and it puddles coolant in the valley underneath the intake manifold and there's two holes in the back of the block and when you go to accelerate with it it'll start to run out and start to drip out under there but it can hold quite a bit of coolant there you can hold a quart quart and a half of coolant underneath <laughs> the intake manifold and you you won't see it unless you look directly at it and know where to look for sure well thanks so much for the call steve we are going to sneak one in here let's go with uh looks like doug in tempe he's got a 2008 tundra how can we help you, Doug? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, two questions. Uh, number one, I, the Tundra's got about 157,000 miles on it, 
and I bought it with about 110,000. Uh, most of my miles are eight-hour drives to Wyoming, Mexico, and back, pulling a trailer. What type of service might I be looking at on the transmission? Everything seems to be working fine. On the on the on the Toyotas, I'm a I'm a big fan on late model Toyotas because they're they're using that uh, that Toyota that world standard fluid, yep. um, and it's it's good fluid. So I think sufficiently for most people, I'd say every fifty thousand miles. Yeah. I don't know how heavy a load you're towing, but towing taxes the fluid more uh, because of the amount of heat that's generated in the torque converter when you get going when you get started up. Sure. So it will break down quicker. Um, on Toyotas, you know. Is they tend to have good transmissions. That's a, that's a good transmission. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, short short of solenoids going bad in those, those are pretty rock solid yeah. transmissions. We're not we're not you know we're not making a living based off of Toyotas, but no. but we do want to we you do want to service them yeah. because of the cost of them. You know, if you got to buy one, you're you're not happy about it. It's it's not, you know there's a lot of things you'd rather buy than a transmission, and sometimes yeah. you know, it's it's like selling it's like selling coffins. But um, you know, I have I have seen Toyotas come in with a failure at eighty thousand miles. One of the things that frustrates me about Toyota is they say the service interval is a hundred thousand miles. I I believe it's pretty common for them. Mm-hmm. It depends on year to year and in in what the service chart is. But you know, if I've seen one fail at eighty, and the first service isn't to a hundred thousand, I'm thinking maybe something's wrong with that. But for me, the reason I like service is because of the valve bodies. The valve bodies are very active. They've got a lot of you know in the old days they would just valve on valve off now they're valve pulsated on pulsated full on. of solenoids they're yeah. buzzing they're mm-hmm. going very quickly and they need good lubrication so they're not wearing out those valve bores and the valves themselves yep you know the modern automatic transmission fails for an internal hydraulic leak and that hydraulic leak could be in the valve body so service is definitely a good idea anyhow when we come back we're taking your phone calls at 602-277-5827 602-277-KTR. We've got Frank and Robert in Open Lines. We'll see you in a bit. (laughs) It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships and, oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Hi, I'm Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission. Well, you may have come to know us for being a transmission expert. What you may not know is that our customers regularly ask us why we don't perform repairs to the rest of the vehicle. You guys are so great. Why work on just the transmission? Well, the request became hard to ignore, and three years ago, we began to build an infrastructure to perform general automotive repair. We weren't going to do general repair if we couldn't be great at it. So in 2013, we began the soft opening of Tri-City Auto Repair on Smith Road. We brought on ASC Master Technicians to work side-by-side with our Master Transmission Technicians. The combination of the best in both of these trades has created a synergy that allows us not only to fix your transmission, but to service and repair your whole car and to do it well. Let's face it, the modern car has become so integrated. We believe all of our expert knowledge puts us ahead of the curve. Find us at TriCityTransmission.com or TempeAutoRepairShop.com. That's TempeAutoRepairShop.com. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at MyCarHurts.com. Gas or diesel foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurt. KTAR FM, Glendale, Phoenix. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR on air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic now. It's 1130. I'm Tom Perumian. Here's our top story. Search and rescue operations are underway for three U.S. Marines missing after their Osprey aircraft crashed into the sea off the east coast of Australia while trying to land. 
The Marine Base Camp at the Marine Base Camp Butler in Japan said that 23 of the 26 personnel aboard the aircraft have been rescued. Reports of an explosion during first prayers at a Muslim community center in Minnesota this morning. Assad Zaman, executive director at the Muslim American Society of Minnesota, says he thinks he knows what this was. It's a little early to say. All indications indicate that it probably is. The Islamophobic tendency has been uh, fairly pronounced of recent memory. Officials say when they arrived on scene, there was smoke and damage to the building. The Bloomington, Minnesota police chief says the investigation is still in its early stages. Now let's get a check on traffic. Here's Mike Daniels in the KTAR Traffic Center. Thank you, Tom. In Avenue, we've got a crash at El Mirage and Buckeye Road. Wreck at 27th Avenue and Durango. And an injury accident in Scottsdale involving a bicycle at Chaparral and Miller Road. This report brought to you by Goodwill of Central Arizona. Don't trash it. Donate it to Goodwill of Central and Northern Arizona so someone else can enjoy it. Visit GoodwillAZ.org to find out your nearest donation center. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. We're settling into a pattern of clear skies through the week. Highs today, 104 degrees, and tomorrow the same. Overnights, 83 degrees, starting to get warm on Monday. Meanwhile, it's 96 degrees in North Phoenix. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Tom Perumian on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Whether you're a lifelong dirt road driving, tackle box toting, weekend warrior, or an outdoor lifestyle rookie, from the desert to the mountains of our great state, Mike Russell has the outdoors in Arizona covered. This afternoon at 1 with Get Outdoors, only on KTAR News 92.3 FM and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed not coercing me into unnecessary work, ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection, they do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, GoodWorks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. GoodWorks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at goodworksautorepair.com. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen from Virginia Auto Service is out of town, or not here, but I think he's driving back from San Diego. I'm thinking if he breaks down, because he gives me so much grief for running out of gas there. I think if he breaks down, he, he's never going to live that down. Yeah. So, Matt, I hope you make it back safely. <laughs> <laughs> and he promises he's not going to leave me stranded for the next six months. I'm, I'm uh, No, he didn't promise that, but I'm going to make him promise that. There you go. So, anyhow, uh, John brought up a good point during the break. He said, Dave, you know, you told the guy on the, the Tundra to get his transmission service, but what, what does that mean? Yep. 
yeah. And, and it's such a huge topic. I mean, there's 27 different ways to service a transmission. Four of them is right, you know. And so uh, that's that's a complex. But he should have the transmission pan removed. Yep. Should have the filter changed. Yep. And it should the, the old filter. We like to break them open. Yeah. Because that tells us how the transmission is wearing. Mm -hmm. You know. And so that's something. It's not like a Engine oil filter, those are a little bit hard to break open and do a little yeah. analysis on. We can break these things open, peel, peel it apart, and see what's going on. Yeah. And that, you know, this guy's driving, he's driving down to Mexico in this thing. Right. If you have a transmission problem, you want to know about it ahead of time before you break down somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of a benefit that when we service transmissions, every last filter gets broken open. Yeah. So we can see the health of the transmission. Right. So I got a couple texts here. I've got. Uh, Hey guys, 2005 Honda Odyssey, 165,000 miles. Should I do something with the transmission or wait until it fails? All services up to date. And and, and I would say service the transmission. Yeah. Uh, in in Hondas, they run hot. Honda Odysseys especially, so the fluid does yeah. break down. Um, I I'm saying service that transmission. Uh, you can't over service a Honda. Now again, you're gonna want it done right. You're gonna want to use Honda fluid. And then I've got a another text here, John. It's 04 uh, Tahoe at 225,000 miles. Trans oil change was done at 130. How long do you need for a service? I live in Chandler. And we, we say five hours. I mean, we – Yeah. It, it doesn't take five hours to do it, but we have people drop them off with us right. and pick them up that afternoon. Yeah. And the reason being is we're busy repairing cars, we're busy diagnosing cars, and we could fill our shop full of services, and we're not helping other customers. Right. So we just kind of – that's the way it's, we handle it's it. It's also not a 30-minute process. You know, I, I, right. a lot of people think, uh, you know, a transmission – Service is a 30-minute process. Now, there's a couple of road tests involved. Uh, we've got the pan down. you got to let the thing drain for a while. Um, we're going to take the filter apart and take a look at it. Uh, and then the guys are going to spend some time actually flushing fluid through it. So it actually takes a while um, to, you know. To, to do it right and yes. to be, you know, because people are concerned, am I going to service my transmission and is it going to go out? Well, we talked early on in the show about somebody servicing a transmission wrong. Yeah. It, in, in, in for what met, that could have been a transmission that got replaced because the service was done wrong. So we take our time on it. We don't we don't rush them in the shop. Some places, you know, ah, we'll get that done in a half an hour, and they, and they rush through it. But it's an expensive investment. So you don't want to you just want to willy nilly go service in the transmission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be my answer to that. So we got the Tahoe, and then uh, I got a text here from Bill. Bill came to came to see me. He's got an Allison transmission, mm -hmm. and, and ironically, it's failing at eighty thousand miles. Yeah. And that it's it's a complete anomaly. He loves the truck, but he does have a chip in there that he's makes got, that thing. He's got a chip in there. <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> he's running that thing like a scolded dog every now and then. I yeah, think that, that truck ran well. It it, does, that, that truck made some horsepower <laughs> for sure. But he's it, his is kind of an anomaly because we don't really see Allison transmissions fail. No. I, I can think of two that I've. You know, we fix little things on them from time to time yeah. or fix leaks on them, that kind of thing. But I can think of two that had to be rebuilt, and they were rebuilt because someone operated them incorrectly. So that, Yeah, I'd like to see how big his trailer is. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a big chip, John. He must yes. have a big trailer. I, I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anyhow, we're taking calls at 602-277-5827. We are going to go with Frank in Tempe. He's got a 2003 Chevrolet Tahoe. How can we help you, Frank? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How are you guys doing? Doing Good. fantastic. Good. Transmission's great. I do have an issue, though. A couple of days ago, I went to go start my vehicle and noticed that my information computer did not uh, turn on and the RPM gauge wasn't working. I put it in drive and noticed that none of the gauges worked. Uh, I thought that was kind of strange. Uh, I was driving it uh, for a while. Uh, the whole tack thing was all, all the tacks weren't working. And all of a sudden they kicked back on and uh, it was going fine and I stopped. I had to do what I had to do, got back in again, started back up, and the tax weren't working again. Okay. I think, uh, you know, it's it's pretty common pattern failure. John, are you thinking? I got uh, Well, I got two on that one. That can be an ignition switch or a cluster. That okay. Can go, that can go either way on either that either one. Way. Yeah, but clusters on those things are... In what he's talking about, Frank, the cluster, the gauge itself is all kind of one assembly. So if you're taking that dashboard apart, you would pull the cluster out, and mm -hmm. those things on... Especially a 2003. Yeah. 
I mean, back in that era, we, you know, we were doing a ton of repairs yeah. on those clusters. So mm-hmm. at our shop, we'll pull them out. We'll take them to a local electrical shop. They'll fix those, yep. put them back in the customer's car. There's also, they can be pulled out and shipped off and fixed. And there's mm-hmm. exchange programs and all kinds of different ways to do that. But, uh, you know, I've seen gauge problems on a Chrysler Caravan that has a bad battery. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, that's that's why I went ignition switch on this also. You can't rule out an ignition switch on these. Um, just something uh, – you can hook a scan tool up to them, and you can, uh, you can watch the uh, data on the uh, voltage supplies to the uh, cluster and look for DTCs. Sometimes they'll code. Uh, sometimes you can smack the dash. Yeah, and, and they'll take up work, and that's a you know I that's call a that, legitimate test. I call that the old Fonzarelli, the there tap you test. You know, bang the jukebox, and if the right song comes on, you're Fonzarelli. Yep. So, anyhow, thanks for the call, Frank. We're going to go with Robert in Phoenix. He's got a 2002 Toyota Echo. How can we help you, Robert? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. I I inherited my wife's car at 250,000, and it, it, I had. Um, the uh, wheel bearings replaced, but now I've got a um, sound that's coming into the driver's part of the car, it's, and it's loud enough I can hardly hear the radio. I don't know if it's coming, if it's wheel noise or what. But is it possible that uh, this gentleman, who is uh, kind of a neighborhood mechanic, might have put the bearings in wrong? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a that's a great question, and, and he could have done a perfectly good job and put the bearings in right, but, John, we've had a couple this year where we put brand new, we put premium bearings yeah, in yeah. the car, and next thing you know, yeah. six months later, it's back and it needs bearings again. Yeah. So the, the one thing I would suggest if you came to my shop and we took your car for a spin, I'd be doing what, what I call the swerve test, and uh, <clears throat> I'm driving the car straight down the road. If I swerve, if I bank the car to the right a little bit, and you said it was on the driver's side, and if I bank to the right, that's going to put more load on the left front wheel. And mm-hmm. if that noise changes and gets louder, hey, maybe that left front bearing is bad. And if I bank it to the left, it's going to take the load off that left front wheel and move it over to the right. And if it gets quiet, hey, that may be confirmation that we have we do have a bad wheel bearing. Mm-hmm. So that stuff definitely comes up. And people don't realize that in the auto shop, you know, one of the things we're subject to is parts, parts issues. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. You know, we try and buy the best part for the customer's car that's going to be the best quality and all those type of things. And we'll buy the best one we can buy and sure, yeah. sure, sure as and can we be. And we have to be careful with that with, with noises, too. Um, there are uh, motor mount issues on mm-hmm. those cars that kind of mimic uh, okay. the uh, 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 noises from the wheel bearings. So, yeah, you need to find somebody that's uh, familiar with the noises and, and can road test it for you and... And one of the one of the toughest things on that is someone with a seat of the pants feel, Robert. And yeah. that's the hardest thing. I can't train mechanics to have seat of pants feel. Yeah. You know, and and I drive a lot of cars because I do have a good seat of the pants feel. Yeah. And I talk sometimes on uh, on the the show about the thumbometer. <laughs> that's when you grab it with your thumbs to sure. decide if it's good or bad. Yeah. You know, and you might use your thumbometer on the uh, AC line to see if it's cold. Yeah. You know, that's a quick test, but I call it the butt buttometer. Mm-hmm. You know, where, where, where's that noise coming from? And that feel thing, it's so hard to, to do in noises. Anytime we have a customer with a noise, we say, come on down, let's take it for a drive and uh, so that they can show us the noise, and then we try different things. And sure. so, sometimes it's John and I driving cars. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, Dave, you got to drive this one. I drove it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then I drive it. I say, I think it's this, but let's throw Chris in it. Yeah. Chris goes and drives the car. And so we're talking about a team of mechanics working on a, a noise that, you know, we just real quickly said, oh, yeah, it could be a bad wheel bearing again. Yeah. But there is more to it. So yeah. thanks for the call. We are going to go with uh, – Eric and Anthem on a 2000. You know what? We're not. We're going to come back to you, Eric. What I want to do is do a little bit of fact or fiction. And the fact or fiction for the day, actually, you know, I'm even a little bit turned around because I was reading on uh, Angie's list a trusted source, John, about uh, transmission. <laughs> trusted source. <laughs> trusted source. <laughs> and the expert on transmissions. And we said there's a lot of great information on the internet about transmissions. <laughs> and yeah. there's there, about, about half of about the transmissions. Half of it's wrong. Half of it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's great information, but about half of it's wrong. So I was looking at this, and uh, it was number five, and the top five reasons that you think you have a transmission problem. And it says, a warning light alone, like, quotation, the check engine light, typically doesn't mean you have a transmission problem. Fact or fiction, John? 
Well, that's that's fiction because that light definitely can mean you've got a transmission problem. And I think what their confusion there is people think that light is only for emissions problems. Well, mm. it is, but you can have transmission problems that increase the emissions in grams per mile. So you can have codes P1870 transmission component slipping codes turn that light on. And you can actually have a transmission problem that illuminates that check engine light. So, yeah, there's a little bit of fiction there. A little bit of fiction there. So there's all kinds of great information on the Internet, but how to digest it, you know, it, it, it you know it takes years and experience to go, mm, yes, no, you know, indifferent, you know, that kind of thing. So yep. anyhow, when we come back, we've got Tom, uh, we've got Eric, we've got Gary, and one of these names I can't read, but it's a Toyota Tacoma transmission. So we'll be right back. Are you looking for a refreshing change in customer service? I'm Lee Weatherby from Accurate Automotive. How about a refreshing change in your car repair relationship with honest, clear, and responsive service that looks out for your needs and not ours? For over 20 years, we've been delivering award-winning service provided by ASC certified technicians with one goal, looking out for your best interest. If it needs fixing, we'll tell you. If it doesn't, you'll know that too. I guarantee that you will not get that business-as-usual treatment at Accurate Automotive. Foreign and domestic, cars, trucks, and even fleet service, Accurate can handle your job. I invite you to come in and experience a refreshing difference in car repair and maintenance. Stop by for a free courtesy inspection, a $49 value. We feel it is well worth our investment in you because we know that good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. I'm Lee Weatherby, and I'll be there to greet you. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Ropeson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's Internet. National Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years, and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that will help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio. Matt Allen with Virginia Auto Services out. So I've got John Riggle in with me. He's our lead technician at Tri-City Transmission and Auto Repair. And John has been doing this 40 years so chances are, if you've got a problem with your car, he's seen it. Maybe once or twice or maybe a hundred times. And uh, every now and then we see one that we haven't yeah, seen. I, it <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> Just like Bill with the Allison that's yeah. you know having a problem yeah. at 86,000 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill, you're the first guy on that. You know, We had to spend extra time on it and be real diligent to diagnose this thing because it didn't fit within the pattern. Exactly. You know, yeah, so, it didn't. so anyhow, we are going to go with, uh, oh, we've got to get to Eric and Anthem on the Honda CRV. How can we help you, Eric? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, so I got the 2000 Honda CRV, and uh, it's kind of got like a clunk in the transmission, but I can hear it sounds like an old Ford pinion gear. How do I tell whether or not that's the transmission or like in the rear end? Is it is it a noise that changes when you go on and off the gas? Um, no, reverse and drive. Oh, it's just a clunking? Yeah. Okay. I think, uh, you know, you said old Ford pinion gear, like maybe the differential was getting loose or something, and yeah, you know, yeah. kind of clunked in the gear. But, uh, John, I'm going to go with uh, um, his first reaction, the engine mount thing. Yeah. That's pretty common when people are getting, you put it in reverse, you go from park to reverse, clunk. And the engine's actually moving, and if yeah. you got a broken mount, it's clunking. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, park to drive. But the first thing we're going to do with that is just to verify that. I'm being quick here because we've got a lot of phone calls that we've got to get to. But uh, if I had the hood open, I'd put John behind the wheel. Yeah. And he put his foot on the brake, and he'd, he'd torque, you know, power brake it, and we'd watch how much that, that engine moves. It's going to move a little bit even with good mounts, but yeah. if it's flopping around, 
in the sensation, the, the seat of the pants feel thing that we're talking about, the sensation is if, when you power brake it, if it clunks back, mm-hmm. that, that's really the indicator that we got a mount issue. Oh, yeah. You know, because a, a good mount won't necessarily clunk back, right. you know. Uh, so anyhow, that's where I would go, but that's that's what the technician more than likely is going to be doing. We're going to go with uh, Tom in Mesa. He's got a 2008 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee. How can we help you, Tom? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys, just a quick question. On the 08 Jeep Grand Cherokee, on the temperature control on the panel, um, it only blows on the highest uh, setting. It doesn't blow any more on one, two, or three. On the temperature control or the fan speed control? The fan speed control. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was... Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Made a mistake there. Are you there, Tom? Yes, I am. Go ahead. I was told it could be the resistor. Yeah, that would be real high on my list to check. Yeah, that would be one of the first things I would check. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a fairly common issue. Yeah. You know, and uh, the resistor, now do the resistors go bad just because they go bad, or are we starting yeah, to have a fan that's drawn a lot of amps? Yeah, the trick the trick is quite often when you find out that the resistor is bad, it's because the blower motor was going bad and drawing too much current. Uh, on the high speed, they run current directly to it, so you don't have that resistor in, the, in line there. And uh, uh, so usually you wind up with that high speed uh, still operating, but it may be drawing too much current. So... Uh, Something, you know, you can check and replace the resistor, but usually what I like to do is do a current draw draw test. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the uh, call, Tom. We're going to go with Gary in Phoenix. He's got a 2003 Dodge Neon. How can we help you? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I have a standard transmission, and uh, I'm getting some clutch drag at the higher RPMs, and I'm just wondering if that's like a synchro issue or if it's like my clutch maybe needs more fluid or something. I'm just... It's getting hard out and into the second gear at high RPMs. So you're saying clutch drag is when you when you yeah, say yeah, it seems like it's catching. Like it's I'll push the clutch in and it's in and it there's some resistance coming out and into the second gear only at higher RPMs. Okay, and uh, you know that is one of the <clears throat> one of the first things that we're looking at when we got issues. But usually clutch a clutch that's not disengaging will affect all the gears. Yeah, and not necessarily a, a high RPM thing. So yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. starting to wonder if we're having a problem with second gear. What points you in the direction of the clutch, Gary? Uh, I just feel like it's uh, it just feels like the clutch isn't disengaging all the way, and it just feels like it's it's not grinding gears. It just feels like it's harder to pull out of that gear. So I'm but so it could possibly be a synchro, maybe. I'm not sure. How is how is reverse and how is first gear? Are those difficult to get uh, into? First is fine. Yeah. Every every now and then I'll put it. I have to put it in the first and then into reverse, even okay. reverse. Every now and then. Well, I tell you what. Um, second gear, <clears throat> second gear when you're young and and full of testosterone is the first gear to have an issue in a transmission. <laughs> 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 and I don't know, John, how many cars come in with second gear because that's the gear you're grabbing really hard. Yeah, yeah. You know when you're, you know, you usually don't have a three four problem or a four five problem because you're already headed down the track so mm-hmm. far. You, you may not even get to those gears in a quarter mile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that first gear to second gear, if you're trying to trip the tires. So I do. There may be some damage to that actual synchro, uh, mm-hmm. especially it gets worse at higher. RPMs, but the fact that he's not having a problem with first gear or reverse, that's telling me I'm not necessarily having a clutch disengagement issue. Yeah. Because yeah, that's yeah. where that's going to show up the right. first thing. That's so. where that's where the engagement shows up. So yeah, I would be less inclined to think it was a clutch. Okay. Hey, thanks for the call, Gary. And we're going to go with Rogelio, and, he, and I grabbed him during the break. He gave me a little bit of his story, but he had his uh, fluids changed in his Toyota Tacoma, and now he's having some sort of issue. Go ahead, Rogelio. Yes. Yes, uh, I have uh, uh, this problem uh, after uh, they, they replaced the uh, fluid uh, on the transmission. They also did uh, the, tra- uh, the, tra- the um, what is it called? The differential radiator. The differential fluid uh, change, yeah. Okay. Uh, but but when I when I go like 20 miles an hour, uh, it it starts like like shaking, like vibrating, and then it goes away, and then it, it does the same thing like at 30 miles an hour. And uh, he only does it when I when I you know pull out uh, slowly. He doesn't he doesn't do it when when I you know push the the, the gas you know and and go fast. Try to go okay, fast. so when you when you so just that, we call that like a tip in throttle. So when you're just giving a little bit of gas versus versus munching on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. In uh, during the break, you had said that the shop had checked things like spark plugs and coils and that type of stuff. 
Yeah, they did check it all. All, all of that actually, uh, they they uh, they have put uh, new spark plugs and and uh, and, and they uh, they checked them all again, you know, and, and they say everything was fine. They they put the you know the scanners and everything. I just said all of that was fine. You know, everything with the, related with the engine was was okay. But they were just thinking that could be that the torque converter. Okay. Now, but they they're suggesting me to to rebuild the whole transmission. Right. I don't know if I should go that way or. And you said about 120,000 miles on that thing. 128,000 miles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and we're we're saying, uh, you know, earlier on the show, Toyotas make great transmissions, and they do make great transmissions. Mm -hmm. So if in fact, you know, a couple things come to mind for me, and I don't know who the shop was and how they service the transmission, but we talked a lot about fluid. Yep. If there's a car that has a converter chatter after a service, I'm thinking, hey, did we use that uh, Toyota that's fluid? The very first thing that comes to mind. So I would I would make sure it's got the right fluid in it. That would be my first. And if you are still having, you know, converter clutch issue, you don't have to. Because it is a good solid transmission, you don't have to do the whole transmission. You can just go in there and, you know, what we do is we do a torque converter update. So yep. we're going to take the transmission out. We're going to put it on the transmission bench. We're going to pull the converter out of it. We're going to send the converter out. We're going to machine it so we can see what's on the inside and confirm our diagnosis. Yep. And then we're going to address everything related to that clutch. So that's going to be the solenoid. That's going to be the valve, uh, you know, filter and fluid. And yep. then <clears throat> as long as the transmission looks healthy, we'll put it all together with new fluid and filter, stick it back in the vehicle, and yeah, you're on but, your way. You know, if this if this occurred right after they did a fluid change, mm -hmm. that's the first thing that comes to mind. Somebody put the wrong fluid in it. That's just and this, this goes so back common. to why people are nervous about getting their transmission serviced. And, right. you know, engines fail four to one. I mean, I'm sorry, transmissions fail four to one over uh, engines. Yep. Everyone changes their engine oil, but when it comes to transmission, it's like the people are like, hey, I am damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Yeah. And there's a whole lot more to that information. You know, I have people come by. We go for road tests. We look at the fluid and see how that's looking. Yeah. So anyhow, hey, Bree, thanks for running the dials today. And uh, if you're looking for a friendly, honest, competent auto repair shop, you can find them at Bumper2BumperRadio.com. That's bumper T O. BumperRadio.com. There's a list of competent shops there that Matt and I would carte blanche, refree there tomorrow, go there. These people will take great care of you. So we're real confident in that. Uh, and uh, glad you could join us. Another thing at BumperToBumperRadio.com, if there was something we talked about in today's show that you want to go back and listen to, you can go there. There's a podcast there. In any show for the last six years, you're going to find there at BumperToBumperRadio.com. Um, from all the shops at Bumper to Bumper Radio, have a great re weekend. Remember, never to text and drive. It's an easy habit to get into, but yep. uh, put that phone in the back seat. We'll see you next week.